nicknamed Reiner Gamma um, for the nearby Reiner impact crater. And it's a, a curving bright pattern that extends for a couple hundred miles across the surface. And there are thin, um, what people have come to start calling dark lanes that are interspersed within this sinuous brighter mark. Um, and then, okay, you know, once we got to the space age, um, there were images collected um, by the, the lunar orbiters that preceded Apollo, and then by uh, Apollo itself, the astronauts and the, you know, metric cameras that were in the command module. And people found other examples of features like Reiner Gamma. Um, most of them happen to be on the far side of the moon. And um, what's interesting is some of those far side swirls are on highland terrain. Right, Reiner Gamma is on Oceanus Procellarum, right, one of the big, dark, relatively smooth uh, lava plains, right, um, Latin, in Latin, the, the Sora's Maria, right, on the near side. Um, on the far side, there are swirls both on these mare surfaces and on the rugged, brighter highlands. So people started to recognize there's this, there's this class of, of feature but, um, you know, well, what are they? How are, they're, they're, they're quite beautiful. They're mysterious. How did they form? Well, there's a number of ideas that people have had over the years. Um, one of the earliest was that uh, the surface had been actually scoured by um, gas and dust in the coma of a comet that collided with the moon. Mm. Uh, that idea was published in 1980 by... Uh, a researcher named Peter Schultz at, at uh, Brown University. Now, there's a couple other major hypotheses for the swirls, um, but they have to do with another discovery about swirls that came from Apollo and later on the lunar prospector robotic orbiter. And uh, that discovery is that the moon has localized patches of magnetic rocks, and they happen to coincide with the swirls. So um, these magnetic anomalies are something else that we should talk about. Yeah, yeah, we should. What is that, a magnetic anomaly? Well, you know, it turns out that the moon doesn't have a global, internally generated dynamo field, like, say, the Earth and Mercury. But there are regions where there are magnetized crustal rocks, and we, these are called ma magnetic anomalies. So this is a, a second mystery, okay? Why are there magnetic areas on a planetary body that today doesn't have a global field? Well, just like uh, with the swirls, there are a number of hypotheses for the formation of the magnetic anomaly. Um, but now that we know about the magnetic anomalies, let me uh, head back to some of those other ideas for how the swirls may have formed. Yes, and sir. then we'll, we'll tie this all back in. Um, I can say some more about the magnetic anomalies in, in, in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, how did the swirls form? OK, one idea is scouring by the, uh, the, the coma of a comet. Well, another hypothesis is called solar wind shielding. And the concept here is that this local magnetic field acts as kind of an umbrella, right? that um, protects the surface from the charged uh, solar wind particles, mostly protons and electrons, that stream out through the solar system from the sun. Now, in a normal non-magnetic area, these solar wind particles come straight in and hit the surface, since the moon has essentially no atmosphere. And it's thought that the, the protons in particular affect the rocks and the soils and cause them to darken over time. This process is, is called space weathering. And the darkening happens when ferrous iron, if you remember your chemistry, that's Fe2+, plus, <laughs> ferrous iron, in the silicate minerals, uh, gets chemically reduced to its metallic form. And so there are these tiny iron particles, and they're very good at absorbing light. So the material uh, becomes darker. Well, so think what ha might happen if part of the surface is shielded from the solar wind, right? 
that area might remain bright while nearby locations that don't have a magnetic field, they kind of darken as usual. And if the structure of the magnetic field is very complicated, then the result could be the complicated sinuous pattern of bright and dark that we see in the swirl. So this idea, the solar wind shielding hypothesis, was also published in 1980. 1980 was a banner year for, for lunar swirl. And um, the first author of that paper was uh, Lon Hood of the University of Arizona. And it's really cool. We've got him as a team member on uh, our lunar vertex mission. And um, I'll just remember, mention one other idea for what the swirls, you know, how they could be forming. And this has to do with the unusual behavior of electrostatically levitated dust, all right? So there's, there's pretty good evidence that solar ultraviolet light causes tiny little dust grains to become electrically charged. And repulsive forces might cause these grains to hop around. Now, through kind of complicated means, in an area where there's a magnetic field, there could be some associated electrical fields that are set up. And therefore, these electrical fields could influence the way that these little charged dust grains are hopping around. And maybe they get attracted to or repelled from certain locations that causes an accumulation of dust. And maybe this bright dust is what we're seeing as, um, as the swirl. So that idea is modern. It was uh, proposed in a 2011 paper by uh, Ian Garrick Bethel, who's now at the uh, University of uh, California, Santa Cruz. So those are pretty much the leading ideas 